This is not how I would do this. To all of my textured hair friends and or kitchen beauticians, if you have been looking to achieve the butterfly haircut, which is the most recent trending haircut and DIY tutorial, this is the review and breakdown for you. Today I'm gonna sacrifice my hair for a cut that I don't even want, but that's okay because I do wanna show you how this cut will look on hair that is naturally curly and how I would recommend anybody to do it. This is not this is not how I would do it. It's never this easy. What's good, everybody? I am Yamane Gromel. I'm a licensed hairstylist, a curl specialist, and most importantly, I am here for you. And I do not want you to make the biggest DIY hair mistake of your life. Is the butterfly haircut going to be for you? And if so, how can we better execute? To find out, you're gonna wanna keep watching this video for tips and tricks and steps to customize this cut for you. Without further ado, let's get to it. Oh, she's snappy, she's snappy. Don't just be cutting your hair in the snap of a finger. If you think that you are qualified after watching a 30 second tutorial on TikTok or even a 12 minute video on YouTube, you've got another thing coming. You've got another thing cutting. <laughs> oh no. Now, for a little bit of context, in case you're wondering, what is that? That's That was me when I first heard of the butterfly haircut until I saw it. And very simply, the butterfly haircut is a long layered, round, concave haircut. And it is a very classic layered haircut that was most popularized back in the 70s. Back when people were calling it the feathered haircut because everyone wanted to look like the It Girls at the time, the Charlie's Angels. Farrah Fawcett, Jacqueline Smith, and Jill Monroe all had it. It was often called the Farrah Flip, and it was that feathered look on their long, bouncy hair that transcended through the 80s and the 90s on the Rachel. Oh yeah, that's another version of this haircut. Miss Jennifer Aniston is a great depiction of how it looked on shorter hair. And now, of course, over the years, it's come back, especially as everyone is obsessed with a blow-up right now. You gotta thank the Dyson Airwrap for that. Through and through, this cut provides a ton of shaggy, flippy, back-kicking layers that can give a ton of body, but on a bouncy blowout. That is how this haircut is meant to be styled. So who is it great for? Wavy and straight hair. How does it look on curls? Well, all right, so I have prepped my hair. It's just washed, conditioned, and I stretched it with my blow dryer and a wide tooth comb. That way you could better see the shape before and after as opposed to cutting the hair while it is wet. Obviously, curly hair expands when it is dry and without a trained eye, cutting it when it's wet can be a very unpredictable, it can be very stressful because you can't actually visualize how the haircut is looking. And amongst many other things, it is very difficult to maneuver a lot of wet curly hair into the ponytails amongst many other pony problems. If you have different curl patterns, it's best to cut your hair dry. Dry? I'm dry. One moment, please. I am behind. I am behind. I have not been drinking my water. Wow. I like it. No, no you don't. If you have multiple textures, you should cut the hair dry in its natural state. And most terrifyingly, this type of haircut, which is supposed to cut you a bunch of layers and on some people give volume, this might actually remove your volume. Now this is specifically more of a placement issue as where we place these ponies is going to determine the shape of the haircut. And this haircut shape may not be ideal if you have one very fine curly hair that you don't like to style, hair in general that you don't like to style because this look is meant to be styled. It's also not meant for short hair and it's not meant for you if you just have really tight curly hair and you want to be low maintenance. This is a high maintenance cut, but if you do have longer hair that's at least below the shoulders, and if your texture is medium to coarse, and if you like the look of lots of layers, and you are okay with the reality that this haircut may leave you with a mullet, and especially if you like to switch up your curly look into a blowout, then this cut is gorgeous. But here's how you actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not how I would do this. Let's break down this horrendous placement. This trending DIY haircut demonstrates the front, including like the bang section and the sides tied at your 
eyebrow level in front of your face and all the hair behind your ears tied up at the top of your head. Now, since haircutting is very geometric, the angles in which we elevate our hair completely determine the shape and the way we distribute the hair's weight. In other words, it's gonna have a big impact on the type of layering that you achieve. So specifically with the front, this is going to be very heavy. Not just that, but if your hair is long, and I'm saying longer than mine, more like on my sister or longer, let's say you have waist length curly hair, cutting your sides into this section is going to completely disconnect the front half of your hair from the back, bringing that mullet back. As I mentioned when talking about the problems with the ponies is they don't take into the fact your hair's density, and usually the hair in front of the ear on the sides here have a lower density and if you don't have a perfectly rounded hairline god bless you because you may also achieve a lot of inconsistencies in the haircut and when i say inconsistencies i mean holes and gapping and that disconnection from the back however this angle right here will give you very choppy front layers which if you're going for that rachel from friends moment and you've got more of that mid-length hair it could work for you but there's a better way and as for this back placement pulling the hair up a 180 degrees from the way the hair falls that is will create lots of gradual soft layering but here's the thing while this type of layering is known to give lots of body to long hair and straight and wavy hair that is going to be blown out this is the absolute opposite of what you should be cutting if you're looking for a round voluminous curly hair shape but Cutting up here, you're removing a lot of the weight in the crown of your head while keeping a lot of density on the ends. Now this makes it great for fine hair that doesn't want to create really straggly ends with layering, but it also completely collapses your shape if done too aggressively. And in the end, instead of looking round and fluffy, if that's what you were going for, it's gonna result in more of a bell shape. Not completely triangular, but on curly hair in its natural state, it's gonna be rounded in through the top rectangular through the lengths and a little heavier and squared off on the bottom giving you this kind of bell shape which doesn't give you a lot of volume in the crown despite there being short layers however this is especially the case on short curly hair but if you have longer curly hair whose hair is too long initially to create a nice rounded shape this type of layering will give lots of different variations different lengths of the curls a waterfall if you will through the back of her head but long story short, just to recap, with the front section cut like that, you're gonna get very heavy choppy layers. And with the back section cut like this, you're gonna lose a lot of excess weight in the hair, but also possibly collapse the shape of your hair. So I'm gonna show you a better way. And since we're already here, I'm just gonna keep this back section out of the way. I want you to start by finding your part. I'm a side part queen, so this is what I'm doing. Now you wanna have a flat comb handy. You're going to use this to find the bang section. Place a comb at the top of your head, and where the comb lifts off your head is the top of your bang section. Now draw a line with your comb from there to your temple on each side. This is gonna be the shortest part of the haircut, and therefore it's where you need to start the haircut to establish the guideline for the rest of your layering. And you'll be left with this triangular section that is going to look a little bit differently on everybody because we all have different head shapes, which is why we can't all place the same placements. So you can see how long my bangs are. They're a little below my chin. Now I'm demonstrating a side part because I have one and it's more difficult if you have a side part. So I'm going to show this additional step, but if you have a middle part, this is easier for you because all you have to do from your hair split in two is take a little bit of hair from each side, gently pull it down to establish the length and make a snip while still considering the bounce in your hair. Okay. But because I like to wear my hair about one inch off of the center, I'm going to cut the heavier side one inch longer than this side. Because when these two sections sit at the side of my face, this section has a longer distance to travel. And so if I don't cut it accordingly, I'm going to have bangs that are cut unevenly. So I'm going to cut a little piece from the smaller side first and determine where I want the length to be. And I am just gonna gently dampen the ends so that way you can see where the hair has been cut a little bit better. I do recommend you keep a spray bottle handy if you have difficulty finding your guide. But now, this is where that short piece was cut and I'm going to connect the rest of the bang by pulling it all the way across to my shoulder and 
snipping that bad boy off. Now I measure this side to be one inch longer and do the same thing, comb and direct all the hair over to your other shoulder and connect the dots to your guideline. It's really important that you smooth all the hair very well with the comb and with tension, hold that section in between your fingers while you direct it to where it's supposed to be, over your shoulder, but then take a look, pinching the hair, and you can cut it here so that way you can actually see what you were cutting. Just don't let loose of the hair section from your fingers. Now that we have the shortest pieces of the whole haircut, we can start piecing the rest of it together. You can't just big snip, big snip without connecting it. So I can take a small section from what we just cut and bring in the rest of the bang section. And as opposed to dragging everything forward, we are going to elevate up. We could put in a ponytail right here, but it's actually easier for me to just lift this section, find my guide, and cut the rest of those guys. And I'm gonna use this section to be the rest of my guide. I'm brushing the rest of that top section up to that same area above the bangs, or rather part of the bangs. See how this placement is different from the other placement that is being advertised to do? This is going to save you, giving you some insurance. It's so that you don't cut too much length off the sides. These, these bangs are already gonna be bothering me. While connecting them to the bangs. So you can see what is falling. These are the bangs aka our guideline. And I'm just going to gently cut into that. Now when I remove this ponytail, you can see that I'm achieving that bell shape where it's rounded at the top and then rectangular and I still have some weight at the bottom. It is a very shagadelic baby. Now we can move to the back. But to connect, I wanna make sure that I incorporate some of this back here. So I'm going to take down the ponytail and add in some of the hair from the previous section, which is going to act as our guide. That way there's no guessing here. Okay, we don't have to guesstimate. I'm going to clip the rest of the front section out of the way. And once again, just make sure I have everything combed very smoothly. Carefully place the pony. Make sure I find my guideline by pulling it. I know that it's pulling from that front portion of my head. See it right here? I'm going to use it to cut the rest, which is this pom pom. Pom pom? Pom pom pom. This monstrosity. It's like a little microphone, it's very satisfying, it feels really cool. And just like that, I know that it's connected from front to back. I'm gonna let everything down to show you the silhouette while it's dry before going to bring my curls back. But just before we do that, we'll trim up the perimeter. And I'm going to turn my head over my shoulder. Measure the lengths, feels pretty good. When you're curly, it doesn't have to be perfect. And on that note, I'm gonna go bring back my curls and I'll be right back. All right, and this is it. The curls are very fresh in more ways than one. And the shag, she's back in action. We do need to do a little bit of refining. This is what makes a good cut a great cut. It's where we can add in a little bit of personalization. As we often see on straighter textures, thinning shears are usually used. We don't use those here. If you ever need to remove a little bit of bulk or to shape a little bit of the curls, when I turn my head to the side and I fluff it out, I am personally looking for this roundness of shape, really moving the hair around to see where it lays. And if I turn my face and shake, I'm looking for the silhouette that's here. And I can always slightly adjust how this looks with a tiny bit of slide cutting. Just a tiny bit, we're not fraying or feathering the hair. The cut is already doing that enough. Okay, I evaluate the bangs and the other side of the face frame. 
You don't want to get too scissor happy because you can continue to tweak throughout the week. But essentially, this is it. I'm not mad that I did it. I know I was saying that I didn't want this haircut in the first place, and I, I didn't. I wanted to go shorter, and it is shorter. I like the length. I wanted to go for a little bit of a rounder shape, but I can adjust that in a few weeks. How will she do it with my ponytail cut technique? That is a DIY cut I recommend doing if you do have medium to short length like me. I will make sure that as well as any other informational videos that could be helpful in the description box below. And if you go in to the salon, I have a tip. This is what you can ask your stylist if you really want to impress them when you're asking for this haircut. Explain that you want a long, round, concave layered haircut. Or you could just ask for a 70s inspired feathered layered haircut because everyone should know what you are talking about but if you ask specifically for a butterfly cut you might send your stylist into panic it's not it's not a common term not yet and it doesn't it doesn't have to be but listen most importantly make sure you show your stylist photos of your inspiration and try your best to find models with a face shape and hair texture similar to you if you're looking for a haircut and style on your texture but you're not finding it it may just not be meant for your texture. But for more curly hair textured haircut inspo, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on today's video. Stay tuned. If this hair holds up amazingly throughout the week, then I think I have perfected this year's winter routine. Look how juicy. Okay, pray for me and stay warm, everybody. This has been your curly hair mentor and professional stylist, Mains by Mel, and I am out. Peace. Oh my God, I love your haircut. Where did you get it? Yes, it's a butterfly haircut. I didn't. Thank you so much for noticing, you're so sweet. This is me in like 2018. And why is that, why do I like this? No, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't. <laughs> You know what? It's kind of a sleigh. I like the length. I have truly been at this for too long. My makeup is expired. I need to go. I'm gonna go now.